Hello everyone, I just want to do a quick video on my TPU settings for my Creality CR10. These settings that I'm going to be showing you, I have a E3D V6 modification, so just keep that in mind. However, I will go over what my stock settings were before the modification. So in this video, I'll go over the settings, then I'll do a time lapse, and then I'll show you the print quality afterwards. Now keep in mind that TPU, it's almost impossible to get rid of any type of stringing and you'll see string in here and string it up in here on that final print. It's just, it's really hard to completely remove stringing with TPU. The TPU I'm using is Saint Smart's TPU. So if you're using something else, then you might have to tweak a little bit of the settings. Now how I have it set up here, you have profiles in Simplify 3D I don't use profiles. I just I use processes, and that's what I kind of use. It's my profile, so I have PETG, TPU, Polycarbonate, and then this is my PLA. It's not really how the program was designed, but this is just how I do it. I, I feel that it saves the settings better. But then again, I've had this program for over two years, so I don't know if they fixed the problem with the profiles. I will quickly go over this, and if you need to get these settings, you can either get them from the link down below or you can just pause the video. For my extrusion multiplier I found 1.1 works best and then right here I set to for the extrusion width I always set to 0 0.40. Now here here's where settings are completely different from stock. Retraction distance for stock is 7 millimeters however for an E3D you need a smaller retraction distance. If you do a high retraction distance with E3D, you're going to have layer separation. So I found 3.5 works best for TPU for E3D. For the ver vertical lift right here, I found 0 0.20 works best to kind of reduce stringing. Retraction speed, and here's another difference. Uh, for stock, I had 60 millimeters per second. However, for an E3D, 40 millimeters per second. And that's for all my different type of prints, is I had to reduce both the retraction distance and the retraction speed. Now for my coasting distance, I found 0.2 works best for smaller prints, and then I don't even use coast distance on larger prints. If I use coast distance on larger prints, it kind of leaves a hole where the extruder is at the start and stop point. So in layer, I found that this is the best layer settings for my printer. Now keep in mind I'm using an ABL with a Z offset of minus 0.6 millimeters. So it could be different from yours, but right now how I have this set, you can't even see the lines in my first layer. So it's it's a really, this is really nice for me. And I hope this works for you as well. Uh, this is just depending on your print for uh, your top and bottom layers. In additions, I only use a skirt and I only do an outline of one because I primed the nozzle beforehand. And I find this helps with quality on the first layer. Now rafts, you can't use rafts with TPU. Infill depends on what you're printing and supports you cannot use on TPU. So for bed, heated bed, I do 60 degrees Celsius and I do that for TPU, PLA, and PETG. For the extruder, for Saint Smarts, I found that 215 degrees Celsius has the best adhesion to each layer. In cooling, I find that I had to reduce my fan. I'm using the Fang, so I don't know if that had anything to do with it but the stock I printed with just the stock head and my fan speed was up a little bit higher I think it was about 80 so in cooling on the stock one I found that I was at about 60 percent however when I upgraded to the fang I found that I had to reduce it down to 40 percent to get the best 
uh, adhesion because if I, I had it at a hundred percent originally and the layers just peeled right off so I, I do about 40 percent and it works good g-code everything's the same I don't put any of my offsets through this I just do it directly through the firmware so for script this is just the recommended script for the ABL when you buy it and this is from Timothy I did do a lot of firmware changes to the auto leveling and to other areas in the firmware and I might do a video on that later we'll see so for speeds with TPU you're gonna have to reduce it down now with stock I had to reduce it down to 25 millimeters per second but for the E3D, I found that 30 millimeters per second, I get the same quality as if I were to do it on stock in 25 millimeters per second. So 30 millimeters per second works pretty good with E3Ds. And this is something I'm trying right now. I haven't found really any effects on the print. Changing it, the X and Y axis movement speed to 120. Other bridging, this might be different than D4 the default bridging so I'll just let you guys copy it and TPU actually well at least Saint Smart's TPU actually bridge, bridges pretty well advanced I don't think there's nothing different with advanced alright now I'm gonna do a time lapse of the Benchy printing a TPU with these settings and just keep in mind there will be some stringing in the areas but that's just hard to get rid of with TPU okay so let's go ahead and get started on the time-lapse <laughs> alright so the prints all done it off. I mean this this first layer is just perfect. Like I said there are some strings but that's kind of hard to get rid of with TPU but everything else looks perfect. Looks really nice. It has that ability where you can just smash it and do whatever you want with it this is really strong material all right so that concludes this video I hope that helps anyone that's having trouble with TPU or would like to start getting into TPU so thanks for watching